the central message of this book written by very uh, real thinkers, which powerfully refutes the crudity of arguments that to equip children to face global competition, English must be enforced as a medium of learning. I think it's one of the ideas why they brought in teaching of science and mathematics in English. Multilingual education is just for all. And it's not about language alone, but about building a better world, a world of diversity. Multilingualism is necessary for empowerment of the underprivileged in fighting for a more just and equitable world order. Ensuring the language rights of national minorities is a necessary precondition for prevention of ethnic conflicts and for peace and stability as tragically witnessed in the recent history of Sri Lanka. What is the impact of, you know, these this, this notions of mother tongue and mother culture? This lady, Kutna Gangas, and many others take a critical look at the homogenizing impact of globalization and the loss of linguistic and cultural diversity, which she argues is also closely related to biodiversity. Much of the knowledge about how to maintain biodiversity is encoded in the small languages of indigenous and local people. I mean, this we really need to read more about it, like for example, Oranasi community. If you dislocate them, they can't survive. They live in this kind of thing. Through killing them, we kill the prerequisites for maintaining biodiversity. We can have everything, pollution, you know, global warming, everything will be there if you just think that English is the, is the means of economic escape. No. This author argues that biodiversity means it's a lot to do with the language, the people speak, how they connect themselves to the environment, the world, etc. The book warns that the grim process is a fruit of disappearance or inferiorization of most languages. It is not an innocent or inevitable process. It is part of the elite design for domination. So nowadays we get a lot of people, even we used to discuss these things, you know. Like very good historians will say that, you know, you can just watch uh, Chinese movies from Taiwan and learn Chinese words and have Chinese groups. This kind of arguments. It's a design of domination because one doesn't understand the need and necessity for mother tongue language and its culture. Many articles bring out the relationship between language and power and relate the high hierarchization of languages to global and local power relations. This guy called Robert Hilton traces how English has transformed from a language of colonization to the language of neo-imperialism. He cautions against the argument for like English as a lingua franca because in reality it functions more as a lingua Frank, Frank, Frankenstein, yeah. <laughs> Frankenstein yeah. a language that terrifies and exterminates others. It happens now. In fact, my neighbor and opposite neighbor who are all Malays, I go to their house, they communicate in English, not in Malay language, and I have to speak to them in Malay language. So it's the extermination of languages caused by this notion that English is supposed to be something, a lingua franca, not necessarily. This is the argument. Of course, we need a, a global language, and English is widely used in the internet for communications, so we do, we do need that. But the caution is that only future generations will turn Robert Flipson's argument is true or not. Mr. Lee argued many of these points in a very simple language. When he delivered a speech in the Congress of the Slango Tamil School Teachers Association, he said very few things. He stressed equality. What's wrong with being equal? I mean, the Constitution says, the article says it's equality. He said equality. Then he said preservation of mother, mother language. Of course we want to preserve mother language, no, no problem. Then he said the three languages should be made as official languages. I don't see any problem in making the official languages. Of course, when you make as official language, what does it mean? 
he, it's, it's just a recognition of, you know, that you, you can do that. Then he said, culture is benign. Always beneficial to populace. It's only, culture is always good. There is no evil in culture. I mean, these are very, very profound, simple statements. And call for uniting of all for a prosperous Malaya. And this costing is efficiency. Amazing. I don't see anything wrong. Maybe the point which he says three languages should be made as official languages. I don't know whether I, I I mean this is just a statement you made against and then you articulate and people agree, then you make it. So under such a circumstances, we discover in Lin Lian Gyok a person who actually stood and who earned the, the, the title that he is the soul of the Malaysian Chinese. I have to touch a little bit on Tamil education. Before that, I would also just just wanted to. I just had a, this uh, reply from the from the Devan Rayak with regard to some questions that which I sent to them. This reply came in June, just last June. There are 557,722 uh, Chinese in Chinese schools compared to 29,944 in SK schools and 30 Chinese students are studying in Tamil schools. I have to really look what are they doing in Tamil schools. And there is about 95% of the uh, Chinese community are sending their children to Chinese medium. And also 29,944 Chinese parents are sending to SK schools. We, I also noticed that 52,742 million children in Chinese schools and 9,753 Indian students in Tamil schools, in Chinese schools. That means 5% of the Indians send their children to Chinese schools. One disturbing trend that I noticed in the Tamil schools history is in 1969, the Tamil school population was about 80,000. 80,000 children were studying in Tamil schools. This is from the, I, I got the original report from the Ministry of Education. And uh, just about in 2005, two, 90, from 1969 to 2005, the number of students in Tamil school relatively though increased, but actually increased, but relatively is a, is a decrease because in 1969, about 75% of the Indian children were going to Tamil schools and it dropped drastically to about almost about 48%. And we took very aggressive position in the last 20 years. There are a lot of reasons why enrollment in Tamil schools actually dropped because in the 1970s particularly, a lot of research papers were done by academics and those academic papers were very, very uh, uh, bad. They, they stated a lot of lot of negative comments about Tamil school education. For example, one of the leading report done by Professor Mari Mutu states that Tamil schools will only produce a skilled Tamil school laborer. So this, so the emerging uh, middle class parents were very fearful of sending the children to Tamil school. It's also because of the uh, the community was not able to sustain a viable, vibrant, intellectual debate on Tamil school system. So this, this new studies which we, we in fact engaged to carry out was, uh, was possible in the late 80s and then we, we came up with a lot of counter arguments to, uh, to address this problem and we are able to convince that Tamil school is, a, is, a, is, a, is the only available option for us to have our mother tongue in Malaysia and also to promote our culture. If we lose that, we lose it forever. So there is a revolution in, in trying. Currently we have 55% of the Tamil school children are having enrolled in Tamil schools and it's on the rise. And we have stopped closure of Tamil schools currently. The last was few years back. Now there are a couple of under-enrolled schools are 
facing closure, but we stopped all that. We will maintain the schools and we follow the Chinese model and we would uh, definitely adopting and working closely with the, with LLG Foundation and other Chinese groups to, to create a better Malaysia for all of us. So in conclusion, we are going to translate this book, translate this book in Tamil language. Maybe we are going to make a change in the title, if you are permit. Lim Liang Kyok, Soul of the Malaysian Chinese and the father of modern language struggle in Malaysia. Thank you very much.